Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to all of our attendees tuning in from around the world. Today's production of Invisible Women in Sport is an Institute for Sport and Social Justice production. I'm your producer, Garnett L. Overby III. All guests will be muted during this production, but I encourage you to use the chat feature to ask a question or leave a comment. We will reserve time at the end to answer your questions. So now without further ado, I would like to welcome our host, Candace Martin. Hello everyone and we're back. Welcome to season three, episode 15 of Invisible Women in Sport and I'm your host, Candace Martin. Today you are all in for a treat. I'm looking forward to talking to our guest, Jasmine Quinn, Director of Championships at the Southwestern Athletic Conference and might I add, the Alabama State University Women's Basketball Parada. Jasmine, thank you so much for joining us today. Candice, thank you for having me. I'm so excited and I'm, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Um, the Invisible Women in Sport platform is an honor. I don't take this opportunity lightly. So it's an honor to be here today and thank you for having me. And I look forward to speaking with you and having a good time. Absolutely. And, you know, per the pre screen, I know you have a lot of gems that you're very excited and eager to drop today, but first, we're going to play an icebreaker. Okay. Told you to do a little homework. We're actually <laughs> going to do rapid fire. You know, there's okay. an athlete that Bama State spirit in you. I want to see how you perform under pressure. That's what I want. Okay. So I'm going to get my timer started. There are about seven questions that you will answer. You have 30 seconds to answer them. Cool? Oh, got it. All righty. Ready? Go. Layup or drop shot? Layup. Favorite vacation destination? Brazil. Sneakers or heels? Heels. Braids or natural hair? Braids. Favorite championship to work? Basketball. Weightlifting or hit workout? Weightlifting. Song on replay right now? Ooh, that's a good one. Candice, you threw me off with the song. <laughs> oh, you got me. You got me with the song. I don't even think I have a song on replay right now. I'll have a repeat. <laughs> Ran out of a little time there at the end. I tripped you up just a tiny Yeah, you did. But yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I guess maybe favorite song right now. That you're I'm trying to think what I have been listening to. Um, her name is Chica. It's called Crown. Okay. So um, I think that's a good song. It's just oh. a really good song. And she's actually from Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. Oh, very nice. I kind of been switching it up. I had on repeat about prior to my birthday. I kind of switched it up now. So okay. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you did well. All righty. So we're not going to take too much longer. We're going to jump right into the conversation. So why don't you tell us, you know, how did you get your start within the sport industry? Um, for me, uh, I can just say sports started at a very young age for me. I think growing up, I probably played every sport there is, I believe. Me and my brothers and cousin, we probably made up our own sports. Um, so I think it started very, very young for me. But um, just to fast forward, if we um, talking about um, collegiate sports and kind of where I am now, um, I'll say just being, going to grad school, you know, starting in this industry, not my professional, going to grad school and um, getting my master's in sport management. And also interning with the women's basketball team, I kind of was able to figure out exactly the area that I wanted to work in. I kind of thought that I wanted to be in front of the camera in the forefront, but being in grad school, I kind of realized that I wanted to be um, in administration. So going to grad school, that kind of I kind of learned a lot. There's so many different avenues, so many different paths that you can work in sports. And so I kind of started narrowing it down and that kind of helped me um, kind of get started with my professional career in sports, of course, being a student athlete um, as well at the Alabama State University. But um, I do believe going, I believe going to grad school kind of helped me um, figure things out better. And I got my start here um, professionally. Absolutely. And I think that that's, that's a good tip that you have. You know, a lot of students right now are potentially considering going into grad school and you have two different perspectives or various perspectives on whether within the sport industry, whether grad school is a must or something we should do. But I do, I do have to agree with you. You know, I do, I do think that it exposes students, yeah. especially coming straight from undergrad to various avenues and various sport entities that could, they could yeah. potentially go into. So I definitely agree with that. And so you segued a little bit and 
dabble a little bit on that, the Alabama State University. Yes, just so a little. How do you believe that your HBCU experience has impacted your professional career today? Ooh. I think for me, my HBCU experience, and of course I have to kind of deviate being a student athlete, um, it taught me a lot. Time management, discipline, grit, gratitude, humility, just all those words that I can throw out that um, I learned there. And also um, just relationships. I think people, um, just going to HBCU, I established genuine relationships and friendship. Um, my coach, uh, my peers, my uh, teachers, professors, I think they were genuine. And so they poured into me a lot while I was at Alabama State. I believe that they saw things in me that I didn't see, you know, constant words of affirmation, words of encouragement, like Jasmine, you got this, you're going to do this. And they were constantly on my head. You know, they say, you know, if I'm not saying anything to you, that's when you should be worried. Mm -hmm. um, especially like at basketball practice, I felt like my coach was always on my head. But um, another thing from um, going to the HBCU is limited resources. But with limited resources, uh, we made it, we made it happen. You know, we got things done with limited resources. As far as I'm concerned, I lack nothing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I operate with that same mindset, you know, just with today, you know, working at HBCU, working at SWAC, people may think we have limited resources, but we lack nothing. We still getting it done, still grinding, still hustling. So just that HBCU experience, um, I, I, it impacted my life a lot. I take that um, today. And then just some of the experience just from being a student, um, a student athlete, like I went, I'll say like my four years, we went through a lot. I think my time at Alabama State um, just really kind of changed the tra trajectory. That's when it all started, mm -hmm. um, you know, being an athlete and some of the things we've done now, not taking away from my mama, she did a great job, but, you know, going to college, I had to grow up, I had to yeah. grow up. And so there were things, experiences on um, being an athlete that kind of like some of those same words, time management and discipline, you know, um, playing basketball for Alabama State, we, uh, I talked about this um, last week with some coworkers. We did this thing, which it was called 13 Days of Hell. Oh, wow. And it was exactly the word after, oh, uh, it, <laughs> it was, it was that, I don't want to say, it was that. But, you know, getting up at 4.30 in the morning, you may not feel well, having to get up and run miles under time. And if you don't make it, you got to come back later and run it again. So, you know, that discipline, because, I could have dipped, like, you know what? Forget this. I could have quit. I could have, like, y'all can have those miles. I can't hear you too well, Jazz. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, um, just the 13 days of hell, like, those experiences and the things that that taught me, you know, it, it definitely had a... a a powerful and positive impact on my life. I don't think any of, I look back now, none of that, what we did was, you know, to harm or to hinder, definitely to help. And it did. Absolutely. It did. Let, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about these mile times. Because yeah. Coach Penny, that was a 7.30 or less mile. I think, I, I think we were a tall lady. We were seven and under. Seven. Now, some days I hit it. I'll go out there. I feel good. Got my good days and I can get six minutes Six and a half minutes. I won't say six minutes. I never ran it that fast. Six minutes and a half. I, I made it. But there was some morning I knew I wasn't going to make it. So I didn't even kill myself. It probably took me nine minutes. I'm just going to jog this thing out. And I'm already prepared to come back this evening in the heat. But that's okay. I'm coming back. Because I'm not doing it this morning. One good time. That's all she had. I was like the post player on the basketball team running 10-minute miles on the side of a postman. What are we Early. doing? That's like torture. I have nightmares still getting up that early 13 days in a row. Like, and the funny thing, they don't do it anymore. They don't. Mm -hmm. It's different. And it's when different. I found out, I felt some type of way. And I had to go there. I had to talk to them about that. Like, why yeah. aren't y'all doing 13 days of hell? Why not? Why y'all stop? Mm -hmm. But yeah. And for people that don't know, Jasmine and I, we go back to like 2014, 2015. So way back We've established a very good relationship over the years so we have to kind of reel ourselves back a little bit so you guys have to forgive us just a teach all righty jazz so shifting gears just a little bit you know what advice would you give young women of color considering a role within collegiate athletics and conference operations oh that's a good question um 
I would say just begin with the plan, kind of laying out your goals and kind of what it is that you want to do. You know, apply for internships, um, shadow, you know, be social, um, just get that, get out there and make the connections and network. And then also just bring your authentic self, be yourself, stand, stand in your full power, don't dim your light. You know, I think a lot of times we're compared to we think we have to be a little bit more masculine, but you can still be feminine. You still can be a woman of color. You can still be in these powerful seats and these powerful roles and still remain your feminine. So um, you don't have to be masculine, but um, just and I also think just be confident, like just be confident knowing who you are, what it is that you want to do, what you can bring to the table, knowing that um, you are valued and you're an asset. So I think that's just some of the advice that I'll give. I think I'll give myself that, that same advice. So, Absolutely. And it's tough, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's tough because in a white male dominated industry, these are the things that we're, as women of color that we're thinking about, you know, hair. We're thinking about our nails. I'm a six, I'm six foot tall, so I'm thinking about yeah. heel height. You know, yeah. but I've heard over the years, I'm still going to put that heel on. We're going to wear heels. We're going to put it we're on. Gonna do it. <laughs> I wear my tennis shoes too, Candice. You know, at the championships, I have to bring out the sneakers. Yeah, we gotta be. We gotta I, be think, I think I said I prefer heels over sneakers, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. I was like, sneakers. really? You <laughs> I, know. Know. I was like, really? I'm gonna go back. I was trying to make sure I can get through. I'm gonna take the sneakers. I'm taking the sneakers. Absolutely. So now let's take a dive into kind of like what you're doing right now as a director of championships. How would you explain your job to someone with no knowledge? You know, I know, you know, what you do, what it looks like. I've been chasing and running behind you at those championships. Yes. So, you know, tell us about the good, the bad, and the ugly. What does your role look like on an ideal day? So I get that question a lot. So mm -hmm. somebody will be, it's on Instagram, they'll be like, what exactly do you do? And so just to help them understand and me breaking it down, I'll tell them that I am an event planner, um, an event planner for sports. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about event planner, they're kind of behind the scenes. They're not, you know, in the front, in the limelight, on the cameras or whatever, they're behind the scenes, pretty much making sure everything runs smoothly. If it's from ordering t-shirt, ordering trophies, making sure hotels and things are booked, uh, making sure the student athletes have a place to play or, you know, put on the tournament. I'm that person behind the scene, making sure every little aspect of these championships run and run smoothly, pretty much like a coordinator. Um, on a daily basis, uh, what my job looks like, you know, it's, Again, it's, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of planning. Um, I come in, I'm, I'm behind the desk, I'm at my computer, but not a lot. I think a lot of most of my work is done out in the field. You know, when I'm in the office, um, I'm laughing because I see Brittany come in about those heels. Everybody, they know me, everybody <laughs> like, Jasmine, now you just said that. I prefer to speak you. Um, but I think most of my work is done out on the field and it, it, gets, it gets dirty, you know. I'm in, I'm in the trenches, I'm still, I'm in the rain sleep, help, don't get a lot of snow, cold, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, I'm still out there. I, I'm doing all of that. I am very hands-on. My job is very hands-on um, operations, but I can appreciate that. I think I'm more of a person to be out in the field. Um, sitting behind the desk is cool, but I get excited when it's time to um, leave, pack up, put my laptop in my bag and everything else, and I'm getting ready to head to a championship. That's when the work, that's not when the work begins, but that's kind of when it's smooth sailing, but there's still a lot, so... Absolutely. So did you always see yourself being a director? Like, was that always the goal? I know it wasn't, but. Yeah, so. I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. Um, kind of much earlier, I thought, so I knew I wanted to work in sports, but I thought I kind of figured, well, one, coming out of college, I thought I wanted to play basketball overseas. Um, okay. But when I graduated, graduated you know I walked across the stage with a bombed ankle so once I realized mm -mm, ankle hurt knees hurt I'm not I don't think I'm gonna be able to go over there everything hurt. And play no more basketball I want to see another ball ball. Hang up the towel. I think I'm gonna hang up the towel so we just gonna go work we gonna work in some form which um led me to going to grad school but I wanted to be I wanted to be a sports commentator I wanted to work for ESPN and it's so funny people know that I go back home there's like you, you still working in television you still like uh -huh. that's why I have to explain what I do I'm like no I'm not working for ESPN I'm not on television I'm not on the <laughs> radio because communication is my background and I kind of have to explain what I do now even to my uncle I have to explain exactly what I do so 
I thought I wanted to be um, a sports commentator, women's basketball, mainly, but whatever sport, I thought that's kind of what I wanted to do. But then grad school kind of helped me narrow down those areas and administrative administration became interesting to me, like, because there's so much I can do. I can use all different kinds of backgrounds. I got my undergrad in communication with a minor in marketing, got my master's in sport management, probably got some other titles on the end that I just was, you know, given, but I can, <laughs> like my title now, my job now, I use all of that, that knowledge, all of the experience, those degrees um, in the role I do. So I didn't think, I didn't think I would be doing this per se, because even um, starting at the SWAC, I started as a communications intern, but I knew quickly that I didn't want to stay on. <laughs> I didn't want to stay on that side. So I did that rather quickly. So kind of transitioned to the administrative side. And I, I love it. I, I like it. I Absolutely. enjoy it. Absolutely. That's, that's all that matters. It makes a big difference when you actually love what you do and who you're doing it for. And so I kind of want to shift gears. We're talking about like the HBCU athletics. We're talking about the Southwest Athletic Conference. So there's a stigma associated with working in HBCU athletics that those professionals are stuck. What would you say to those people who believe in this myth? Let's put it out there on Invisible Women. It's not true. But what would you say in response to that? I mean, of course, it's just what it is. It's a myth. I, um... I believe that individuals that have been in HBCUs and around this for a long time chose to be. Um, I think they choose to be here. I think if there were any um, opportunity for them to go elsewhere that they could have, and then the ones that kind of want to get out and that choose to get out, they make that happen. They put themselves at tables and rooms and places to get recognized, to get um, to grow, to learn and you know, put themselves in a position where they can move on. Um, I also, you know, just believe that good work is going to be noticed regardless. So, you know, there may not be um, a place where you're just applying for these jobs. These people will find you. So good work won't go unnoticed. So, you know, if you're you're true to what you're doing, um, people will find you. They'll find you. They, they see what you're doing. They see that um, you're doing a great job. You're passionate about what you do. You're making things happen. You know, you shifting some stuff, shaking up the room. It'll get noticed. And there's an opportunity to get out if you choose to be, you know, like I said, some people choose to be here. Absolutely. So in talking about, you know, See, people seeing the swag, especially now more than I believe ever. They're seeing the swag more and more. You're hearing about the swag more and more. So, you know, let's talk about like the next five to 10 years. Where do you, what, where would you like to see the swag in five to 10 years? You know, how does your role play a part in that? Uh, I see it even, I won't even say bigger and better. I see it even bigger and even better. Period. You know, even Period. right now, Period. even bigger, yeah. even better. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have to throw that we got to throw that in there because, you know, today I'm actually in the office. I'm sitting here and I'm living in that. I'm seeing it, you know, get better. I'm seeing it grow, you know, for the future. You know, I want us to be on a on a bigger level. We have, you know, more sponsorship, people pouring, giving, giving more and more money. Fans are buying into the brand. We're able to pack out championships. You know, we're on TV and then we see the SEC and you see the ACC, you see your autonomy five schools and their championships are like packed. Like the swag, we, we would get there. Like, I believe that I see it in the making. And, and that's what I, you know, that's what I definitely hope to see, you know, my role that I can play into that, you know, of course, just continuing to be in an asset and pouring into the student athletes and giving back and what I'm doing now, if I'm still in the championship role for me, it's just continuing to enhance, you know, championships and elevate them, you know, is from giving even better participant gifts. You know, it can be iPods, iPads, iPhones. I don't know. You know, it just gets, you're not getting that this year. You know, if anybody, <laughs> not what y'all get this year. But one day we're going to get there, you know, and I see that, you know, currently we do welcome receptions, but we'll be able to turn it into like full-fledged banquets where you can bring people in just entertainment. Um, I, I kind of, just see that envision things like that. So I can, you know, if I'm still here being able to play a part in that planning process. So absolutely. I know I may be a little biased just being a mm -hmm. part of the conference, but I do think that I think everyone has been a joy to see the growth of the conference and how intentional, you know, from the commissioner down to yeah. everybody working within the conference, how intentional they have been in making those improvements. 
small and large improvements. I'm definitely looking forward to these iPods now. <laughs> as soon as I get off, I'm like, hey, uh, I told them <laughs> to go get some iPods. <laughs> One year, maybe not this year, but you got to make it happen. No, absolutely. So after, you know, been at the conference for eight years, you know, what has been the biggest lesson that you have learned while working in college athletics? Um, the biggest lesson I would say, maybe work-life balance. I know people look at that and state it um, differently, but that has been the biggest lesson, but biggest struggle as well. Um, I say it's a lesson and I'm still growing and I'm still learning with work-life balance, but it's a lot, you know, again, you stated I've been here eight years and not once have I ever sent my email to out of the office. Mm. Now, I don't know why. <laughs> Just don't know why I have it, but that's a part of work-life balance just even just setting it I really don't know why I've never done it I just have not said that thing but um you know it's just letting people know that hey I may not get right back to you I might be you know on vacation but I think it's the lesson that I, I've learned and I'm still learning because it is important and like I said I struggle with work-life balance just trying to balance um, the both of them but I think I think that'll be one one of the biggest lessons. Of course, there could be plenty more. But yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard to turn it off. Like like we talked about, it's hard to turn it off when you love it. It's hard to turn it off when you're passionate about it. But sometimes, like most definitely, you have to turn it off. Like I think so. It's hard. Yeah, I, you know. And then too, you know, we have to understand our job isn't a nine to five as well. So you yep. know, if you're in sports, we we know this field is not nine to five. So mm-hmm. you're going to get emails, texts, calls. calls on vacation on the beach in the air in the sky on the ground at church you're gonna get them and you know me it's hard for me to just look and ignore so you know I'm in church trying to pull out my phone and trying to take somebody back real quick my boss <laughs> for sure, you know but um it's it's a part of it though and you have to you just have to recognize that and know like you said no one went to shut it off mm-hmm. absolutely so in your eight years trying to figure out the work-life balance you know getting your nails dirty, running around championships, hauling trophies, mm-hmm. trophy tables, managing coaches, student athletes, all those things, you know, why have you remained at the conference, at the SWAC conference, you know, for as long as you have? For me, I think it's, it's passion. Uh, I'm an HBCU grad. I'm, I'm the product of an HBCU. Um, like I said, this, this is not a nine to five. You, you can't stay in this. You can't do this with grace and, you know, kind of how I operate if you're not passionate about it. You know, as they say, you can't do it for the coin. You, you, you can't, it has to be, it has to be more behind what you do. And for me, it is. So, you know, I'm here to give back. I, I'm an overthinker. I feel like there's just so much more that I can offer, that I can give, that I can pour back into it. Even just being on this platform, that's a step just, you know, people go back and listen and just, um, you know, just to hear some of my background, but Mm -hmm. I just think there's so much more that I can give. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps me here. And, you know, I'm here until God says otherwise. Absolutely. So I know some of the things you do to recharge and reset. So, but you know, balancing so many duties and responsibilities, you know, for the audience, how do you recharge and reset yourself? (laughs) Um, Traveling, you know, (laughs) I love traveling. preferably out the country, um, but I can't, can't always do that. I think my coworkers know kind of starting October to May is hard to travel because all the travel is centered around work. Yep. But come June, July, I'm out. I'm gone. <laughs> and, you know, traveling is the oh, way, well. you know, I got to kind of go far out the country because again, they still can reach me over here. <laughs> now. Take the back, so I got to go a little further um, to really be at a place of a piece and you know and for me I just I think I get to kind of step back get to um kind of shut it off a little bit yeah. and just to get to experience things and do things that I kind of love you know just experiencing new food new places new adventures new atmospheres people is just so much to the world so traveling is is one of those places um is one thing for me to recharge and reset and then of course the gym I know a lot of people think you know for me, it's like, or a hobby, you know, kind of whatever. It's just, it's one of those things that I, it's a must. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I look at it as a hobby or an extracurricular activity because it's a part of who I am. So I think for me, because most time I now, you know, things shift that I like to work out before work. Because again, coming in, I never know what my day is. What time you get up for that? 
you know, I don't sleep a lot. So, you know, most times I'm up at, <laughs> I'm up at 5, 36, but I'll lay there a little bit because I don't have real work now. And this is kind of my schedule. I'll get to the gym maybe around 7, 7, 15, okay. run a little okay. late sometimes. And I come straight to work, shower, get dressed, and boom, I'm already here. They're looking for me. I'm here. Y'all know, y'all give me a minute though. I'm getting dressed. Y'all know I'm here. Give me like 15 <laughs> minutes. And so that, that kind of helps me, you know, maybe recharge every day. I know recharge and resetting. I probably could use more of it, but I think, you know, every day recharging, resetting, me getting up in the morning, you know, going through my morning routine prior to work, that that helps me. The gym yeah. definitely helps me to stay grounded. Yeah, me and the gym, we we got a sticky relationship right now. Um, uh-huh. But we'll, we'll, uh-huh. we'll, we'll figure that out in a few months. Once uh-huh, the uh-huh. grass could uh-huh. beat me up enough. So, Kenny you would know, not be pleased. Yeah. Kenny yeah. would not be pleased. And I'm still a little scarred from undergrad also. And I and I know that. I recognize that. So it's like weightlifting. I That's was the same way. same way. That's to be expected. <laughs> so I'm still trying. We're still trying to. We're still, we're still talking, about, talking through it, trying to figure it out a little bit. All righty, friends. So I'm coming up on my last question. So start now to put your questions in the chat for Jasmine. Go ahead and do that now. Because when Gift takes over for Q&A, she's going to read off your questions for Jasmine. All right, Jasmine. Last question. I got to call you Jasmine because, you know, like I know. I know. <laughs> so, <Jasmine>. <laughs> what would you tell your younger self? Little Jasmine, 10 year old Jasmine, could be 18 year old Jasmine. You know, what would you, if you could whisper in your ear right now, what would you tell your younger self? Could be I would probably have to write a short story. <laughs> um, you know, I think that I would say it's okay to, it's okay to be unsure. It's mm-hmm. okay um, not to have it all figured out yet. Kind of, I mentioned I'm, I'm a planner by trade, so I like to know. I like to have things mapped out. I like to know what I'm getting into, what's to come, and that's kind of like predicting the future. And you can't predict the future, so I'm trying to, you know, just live more in the moment. Just live more in the moment, um, and just kind of like be where your feet are and appreciate all the things that I've already done. I think, you know, we do a great thing, we accomplish something. Then he was like, okay okay, what's next? Instead of just like living in that and congratulating yourself and patting yourself on the back, you know, because, you know, whether small or big, you've accomplished it. And so I think for me, just kind of like going with the flow and being okay with just living in the moment and and not knowing everything. I I can't know everything. I'm not going to have it figured out, you know, and then at the end of the day, just betting on yourself, betting on myself, because if I don't bet on myself, who will? Absolutely. And I think that's very important because it's, it's tough sometimes, you know, currently being a graduate student, you know, thinking about what's next. I think since yeah. I started, I was thinking about, okay, what's next? Because, yep. you know, throughout undergrad, natural. all those things, I always knew like what was next. I knew I was going to the SWAC. I knew I was going to the NCAA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. COVID hit. I said, oh, now I don't know what's next. <laughs> so, what are we doing? So I said, yeah. okay, let's go to school. Right. Yeah. I'm like, but it's like, let's go to school. It's not the same. Always, you kind of like always yeah. know what's coming but it gets to the point where you really don't know like now I might I may get questions like Jasmine what's uh what do you got what do you look like in the next five or ten years what's your long-term goals and it's I don't really know (laughs) and I hate saying that because I should figure it out but there's it's like I'm not really sure I'm just not really sure and it's and it's okay me answering that I don't have to have a long drawn out answer of telling somebody what my goals and my plans are I'm going to be this I'm going to yeah I don't know right absolutely. I'm not sure well James I knew this would be a great conversation I have definitely enjoyed having a chat with you but now I'm going to throw it over to okay. Gift to take over our Q&A okay hi Jasmine once again yes. our first question is what a great conversation this comes from Matt Edelson he says what's a great conversation Jasmine could you talk a little mm-hmm. bit more about the importance of mentoring oh gosh I think you know mentoring is important and um you know of course I do believe you know like my mom is my mom but she's a mentor too but I believe having people that kind of know what you're going through been through what you may be going through. I think um, just like on this platform, you guys have had some great um, women on here, Jennifer Williams, Dee Dee Mary, Monique Hall, and those people, those are people that I text, I, I can call and it's like, hey, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. And just, I think sometimes that we, we may think that we have it figured out and we can do it ourselves and we can work through it. You know, we got it planned out, but we may not have 
all the answers and having a, a mentor can see it from so many different perspectives because for one they may be a little bit more I'll say the word season but they may have a little bit more experience in what you're going through or the area and so just having those different um, views can kind of better help you plan and figure things out. So I, I take it dearly um, having mentors. I think it's, awesome. I think it's important. Awesome. Sorry to cut you off there. And no just problem. a follow-up question to that. Do you have any, I guess, insights on how to find a mentorship or things of that nature? Um, so I know, I know there are some programs, but of course, like, you know, there are different women and women leaders, all those different platforms that you can just join um, and then, of course, finding mentorships um, through that way. And also, it's just attending different summits and attending things and networking and being social, even on social media, reaching out, sending emails. Um, you know, like I, I do that to this day, sending emails, going to somebody's website, look, oh, they've done a lot here. Let me shoot an email and ask them to lunch um, and so, so we can just chat. And, you know, you get to know a person that kind of can start the conversation. So there's many different ways you can do it. There's no right or wrong way to kind of reach out and um, asking someone or wanting that person to, to mentor you. Definitely. Thank you for that. Our next one is from Garnett Overby. He says, Jasmine, thank you for a great conversation. You and Candace made this conversation a lot of fun. You have accomplished a lot in a short period of time. What would you have done for professional development? I'm sorry, say that one more sorry. time. The, the question is, what have you done for professional development? Okay, um, so for me, I have kind of participated on some panels like this. And, you know, even for me, just this helped me with public speaking, like kind of being in front of an audience and having to speak. I've done a couple of these things, whether I'm just signing up or volunteering um, to do. Um, I've gone to different summits, like a women leader. Um, to kind of learn and to reach out. And that's signing myself for, um, for things like that. Um, also, there's different, you know, how you go on website and there's different things that you can sign up that I can't think of um, the name of it, but you can just kind of, and that's more kind of like personal um, development where it kind of tells you, um, kind of explain kind of like uh, your characteristic and you kind of know your characteristic and this is, how you operate. So I think for me, that kind of helps me too from a professional standpoint and a personal, because that helps me knowing kind of like how I operate the best, you know, if it's under pressure or, you know, in loud settings or quiet settings. Um, what else have I done? I think that's kind of like to kind of sum up kind of the things I've done professionally. Most of it has been kind of volunteering and interning as well. Definitely. I think what I've realized is a lot of times, like a lot of skills transfer that we don't even realize from, you know, one situation to another. So that's some really good insight. And our final question comes from Maya King, especially as a black woman in sport. Can you talk about the importance of showing up as your authentic self? Oh, that's a good question. And I, I think that's important showing up as yourself. Cause I think a lot of times, especially with social media now, we look at and see what everyone else is doing. Like this person, they, they're doing this, they're doing this. Oh, I want to do that too. And we don't have to do things like anybody else. You can come in, be yourself and bring in your own thoughts, your own ideas. You just never know how it'll, you know, how it'll go over. It may actually work, you know, trying to change up and switch up to fit in the norm. You know, everybody's doing it. You know, there may be an opportunity where somebody is waiting for someone to bring different energy different ideas so I you know for me every day I'm coming in they 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 know how I'm coming I'm going to be myself every single day I'm coming in here with a smile uh, you know some days it may the smile might not be as big and say so every day it might not be as big but they know eventually it's going to come and you know when we're traveling we're at championships um they they know that I'm going to be myself the things that you know I'm going to bring to the table the things I'm going to lay out I'm not going to I'm not going to dim my light for anyone, I'm gonna remain the same jazz and I'm gonna talk how I talk. I'm gonna be how I be. I'm gonna dress how I wanna dress. You know, football championship, I'm gonna be suited and booted. But Candace, I'm gonna have my sneakers on. Brittany, I'm gonna have my sneakers on. I'm not wearing heels at a football field. So I, they they already know. So I'm gonna be my authentic self. So it's it's important because um, I think there's a lot of time we, we can't continue just to compare ourselves. You know, we have to stand out and it's okay standing out. Awesome. Thank you so much just for your time. And I'm going to pass it back over to Candace. Ma'am. Thank you, Gib. Thank you. I love your name. <laughs>
things. Yeah, Jasmine, that was amazing. I believe that, you know, I learned early on because I went to a, um, it was like a, like a mock interview type of session thing. Mm -hmm. And a um, white lady was interviewing me. I had on professional heel. I'm already six foot tall. So I added a couple inches and she was like, I might wouldn't wear, you know, heels to an interview. And, you know, at a young age, it kind of beat me up a little bit. But then, you know, learning from and being behind women like yourself, Jennifer Williams, Coach mm -hmm. Penny, you know, all mm -hmm. of these strong Black women who are going to show up as you are and own who you are when you're in different spaces, no matter who's in the room. I said, oh, oh, my hair going to get taller. Right? Like, my friend, they're going to be <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Now, <laughs> gonna be now I'm going to wear taller heels. I'm not yeah. wearing yeah. I'm going to wear some taller ones now. Yeah, I want you to see me when I walk in. I that's that's definitely the attitude. Yeah, that's definitely the attitude. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for being able, being available and sharing your story with the Invisible Women staff and also with all of our guests and everyone who will watch the episode later on. We just want to thank you so much for joining us. All right, friends, we're going to close out the show. Once again, we would like to thank Jasmine for joining us today. I think it's safe to say that we are slack. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> all right, friends, we would like to thank you for all of your support of the Invisible Women in Sport. We are a nonprofit organization with other programs that impact various social justice issues. Please use the QR code displayed on your screen to grant us a financial gift as we continue to change the lives through the power of sport. Once again, special thanks to all the organizations and Jasmine, our Invisible Women staff could not do this without you all. A special, special shout out to the Southwestern Athletic Conference for allowing Jasmine the time and the availability to spend some time with us today. Thank you guys. And friends, please follow us on all social media platforms to stay up to date and informed on future programs at Institute SSJ. If you ever miss an episode, we've got you covered. All of our episodes are uploaded and up to date on our YouTube channel. Also, we receive a lot of inquiries about if we have any connections to internships. If any of our supporters or members have internships available, please send your information to our producer, Garnet Overby at goverb at sportandsocialjustice.org so we can send that information out to those individuals reaching out to us. Once again, following today's episodes, viewers, we need your feedback. To make Invisible Women in Sport bigger and better, following today's episode, you will receive a short survey. Please, please, please fill out that survey as we are continuing to improve the Invisible Women in Sport Zoomcast. Tune in November 3rd for season three, episode 16. Whoa, I'm breaking them up. At 2 p.m. with Renia Edwards, Senior Associate Athletics Director, internal operations and SWA at IUPUI, please be on the lookout for that registration link. And once again, I'm your host, Candace Martin of Invisible Women in Sport. See us now. for joining. See y'all November 3rd.